In the heart of Valtara's serene countryside, nestled among rolling hills and whispering forests, stood an unassuming observatory. This was Joran Varric's sanctuary, a place where the boundless mysteries of the cosmos unfolded before his eager eyes night after night. The observatory, with its domed roof and aged walls, was a testament to Valtara's budding curiosity about the universe, a curiosity that Joran embodied more than anyone. On this particular night, the sky was a canvas painted with the vibrant hues of distant galaxies and the soft glow of neighboring stars. Joran, with his gaze fixed through the eyepiece of the telescope, charted the heavens with the meticulous care of a cartographer mapping uncharted lands. It was a routine night, or so it seemed, until an anomaly in the sky caught his attention. At first glance, it appeared as a streak of light, not unlike a comet, its tail glistening with a spectrum of colors as it carved its path through the night. But as Joran observed, a startling realization dawned upon him, the trajectory was all wrong. This was no mere celestial body bound by the predictable laws of motion. It was something else, something deliberate. With a mix of trepidation and awe, Joran watched as the streak of light descended, its descent controlled and purposeful, unlike anything he had ever witnessed. The object, cloaked in a luminous aura, made its approach toward the planes that stretched out beyond the observatory. Joran's heart raced as the object, now clearly a spacecraft of some advanced design, touched down with an elegance that belied its size. The spacecraft, bathed in the soft blue glow of its energy wings, stood in stark contrast to the rustic surroundings of Valtara's countryside. Its hull, smooth and metallic, reflected the moonlight, casting an ethereal quality to the scene. Joran, driven by an insatiable curiosity and an unspoken duty to his people, knew he had to approach the visitors. With cautious steps, Joran made his way toward the spacecraft, his mind racing with questions and possibilities. Who were they? Why Valterra? The air was thick with anticipation as the hatch of the spacecraft began to open, revealing the beings within. The Ashari, as they introduced themselves, were beings of grace and intelligence, their features distinct yet somehow familiar. They spoke of peace and a desire to share knowledge, their words imbued with a sincerity that Joran felt in his very soul. The night air, once filled with the tranquil sounds of nature, now hummed with the promise of a new dawn for Valterra. As Joran stood before the Ashari, serving as the first bridge between his people and these benevolent visitors, he realized that this encounter was more than a mere chance. It was a moment that would forever alter the course of Valteran history, a moment that marked the beginning of an extraordinary journey not just for him, but for all of Valterra. The arrival of the Ashari was a beacon, a sign that the Valerians were not alone in the vast expanse of the universe. It was a call to step beyond the familiar confines of their world and embrace the boundless possibilities that lay among the stars. And for Joran, whose life had been a testament to the pursuit of knowledge, this was the realization of his greatest dream. As the night gave way to the first light of dawn, the observatory, once a solitary beacon of Valtara's celestial curiosity, became the site of a historic meeting. Joran, with a sense of purpose that transcended his own aspirations, knew that the path ahead was fraught with challenges and wonders beyond imagination. But in this moment of first contact, under the watchful gaze of the cosmos, a new chapter in Valtara's story began, a chapter of unity, exploration, and the unbreakable bonds forged among the stars. The dawn that followed the Ashari's arrival broke with a golden hue, casting a new light on the plains surrounding Joran's observatory. Word of the visitors had spread like wildfire, igniting a mixture of excitement and apprehension throughout Valterra. By the time the sun claimed its place in the sky, the once secluded observatory had become the focal point of an unprecedented event in Valteran history. In the capital's Grand Assembly Hall, a place where the most crucial decisions affecting the planet were debated and made, an extraordinary gathering was underway. The hall, with its towering pillars and expansive space, was filled to the brim with representatives from every corner of Valterra, all waiting with bated breath for the meeting that would soon commence. Joran, still in awe of the previous night's encounter, found himself among the chosen few selected to partake in the historic dialogue with the Ashari. His first-hand experience and quick thinking during the initial contact had not gone unnoticed, 
earning him a place at the forefront of this momentous occasion. The Ashari, with their serene demeanor and graceful movements, entered the hall, accompanied by a hush of reverence from the assembled crowd. Their presence was both commanding and comforting, an intriguing paradox that captivated everyone in attendance. The initial exchanges were cautious, laced with the formality that such first encounters often entail. The Ashari introduced themselves as explorers from a distant confederation of planets bound together by shared values and mutual respect. They spoke of their journey across the stars, a quest for knowledge and understanding that had led them to Valterra. Joran, acting as a conduit between the two peoples, relayed the Ashari's message with a clarity that bridged the gap between the unknown and the familiar. The Ashari's offer was simple yet profound, a partnership that would usher in an era of advancement and prosperity for Valterra in exchange for the planet's hospitality and resources. The assembly hall, once filled with the murmur of uncertainty, gradually transformed into a forum of animated discussion. Questions poured forth from the Valteran representatives, each seeking to understand the implications of this proposed alliance. The Ashari responded with patience and wisdom, addressing concerns and illuminating the path forward with their insights. As the dialogue unfolded, Joran found himself at the heart of a pivotal moment in his planet's history. His role transcended that of a mere intermediary. He was a catalyst for change, a beacon guiding his people toward a future brimming with potential. The meeting culminated in a consensus that would forever alter the course of Valtoran destiny. The agreement, sealed with the exchange of symbolic gifts, marked the beginning of a new chapter for Valterra, one of collaboration and mutual growth. As the assembly disbanded, the significance of the day's events weighed heavily on Joran's shoulders. The excitement of the unknown mingled with the responsibility of his newfound position. He knew that the road ahead would be fraught with challenges, but the promise of what lay beyond the horizon filled him with an unshakable resolve. Under the watchful eyes of the stars, Valterra stood on the brink of a new era. The partnership with the Ashari was not just an agreement between two peoples. It was a beacon of hope, a testament to the power of unity and the boundless possibilities that arise when worlds come together. Joran, once a solitary observer of the heavens, was now a key figure in a journey that would take his people to the stars and beyond. In the weeks following the historic assembly, Valterra became a hive of activity and anticipation. The partnership with the Ashari, now formalized and in full swing, had injected a new vitality into the planet's veins. Across the land, from the bustling urban centers to the remote rural communities, the spirit of innovation and collaboration flourished like never before. At the heart of this transformation were the technology centers and universities of Valterra, which had become the epicenters of shared knowledge and learning. The Ashari, true to their word, had begun to mentor Valtran scientists and scholars, introducing them to technologies and concepts that were once beyond the realm of imagination. Joran Varric found himself at the forefront of this unprecedented exchange of knowledge. His natural affinity for the sciences, combined with his pivotal role in the initial contact, made him an invaluable bridge between the Ashari mentors and the Valtran learners. His days were filled with intense study sessions, practical demonstrations, and enlightening discussions that stretched into the night. One of the most significant projects born from this partnership was the development of Valtara's first spacecraft. Inspired by Ashari designs but infused with Valtaran ingenuity, the spacecraft was a symbol of the planet's newfound aspirations and capabilities. Joran, with his childhood dreams of exploring the stars, was intimately involved in the project, his passion and dedication shining through in every aspect of the craft's creation. The unveiling of the spacecraft was a momentous occasion, attended by representatives from across Valterra and dignitaries from the Ashari Confederation. The sleek, silver vessel, christened the Dawnseeker, stood proudly on the launch pad, its contours gleaming under the bright Valtaran sun. The crowd that had gathered to witness the event was a sea of faces, each reflecting the pride and excitement of a people on the cusp of a new frontier. Joran, standing before the Dawnseeker, felt a surge of emotions as he addressed the assembly. His words, filled with hope and gratitude, echoed the collective sentiment of his people. 
Today, we stand at the threshold of a new era, an era where the stars are not just points of light in the night sky, but destinations waiting to be explored. This spacecraft, the Dawnseeker, is the embodiment of our dreams and the fruit of our partnership with the Ashari. It represents not just technological advancement, but the unbreakable bonds of friendship and cooperation that have brought us to this moment. The launch of the Dawnseeker was a spectacle that would be etched in the memory of every Valteran for generations to come. As the engines roared to life and the spacecraft descended into the azure sky, a collective cheer erupted from the crowd. The sight of the Dawnseeker piercing the atmosphere, bound for the great unknown, was a testament to the indomitable spirit of a people who had dared to dream. In the days that followed, the impact of the Ashari's gift of knowledge continued to ripple through Valteran society. New technologies were integrated into everyday life, improving healthcare, agriculture, and communication. The exchange of ideas and cultures enriched both Valteran and Ashari, weaving a tapestry of shared destiny that stretched across the stars. For Joran, the journey was just beginning. The launch of the Dawnseeker was not only the realization of a lifelong dream, but also a beacon that illuminated the path to the future. A future where Valterra, with the Ashari by their side, would explore the mysteries of the universe, united in their quest for knowledge and understanding. As the sun set on a day that would be forever remembered in Valteran history, Joran looked up at the stars with a new sense of wonder and purpose. The cosmos, once a vast and inscrutable expanse, now felt closer, more familiar. It was a reminder that in the grand tapestry of the universe, every thread, no matter how small, played a crucial part in the unfolding story of existence. As Valterra basked in the glow of its burgeoning alliance with the Ashari and the promise of a brighter future, distant eyes watched with growing disquiet. The Xenthrax Coalition, a formidable alliance known for its aggressive territorial expansion and strategic dominance, viewed the rapid advancement of a once-quiet agrarian planet with suspicion and concern. Deep within the labyrinthine corridors of a Xenthrax command ship, High-ranking officials convened in a chamber that thrummed with the low hum of the vessel's massive engines. The room, stark and dimly lit, was a stark contrast to the vibrant and collaborative atmosphere that had taken hold on Valterra. Here, the air was thick with the weight of impending decisions, decisions that could alter the balance of power in this sector of the galaxy. The Xenthrax, a species known for their tactical acumen and unyielding resolve, had long considered the region surrounding Valterra as a strategic buffer zone essential to their defense and expansion plans. The sudden emergence of Valterra as a potential hub of technological innovation under the tutelage of the Ashari posed an unforeseen threat to their ambitions. The assembly was a conclave of the coalition's most influential strategists and commanders, each bearing the marks of their rank and the scars of countless campaigns. At the head of the table sat General Krizak, a figure of imposing stature and steely resolve, his gaze piercing the holographic displays that flickered with intelligence reports and strategic assessments. The Ashari's intervention has accelerated Valtran development beyond our projections, Krizak began his voice resonating with a cold clarity. This newfound alliance not only disrupts the balance of power, but also presents a direct challenge to our interests in this sector. Murmurs of agreement echoed around the table as the implications of the general's words sank in. The Xenthrax prided themselves on their ability to anticipate and neutralize threats before they could manifest. The situation on Valterra, however, had caught them off guard, a rare oversight that could not be overlooked. We must act to disrupt this alliance, Krizak continued, his gaze fixed on the swirling galaxy map before him. The Ashari's influence must be contained and Valtara's ascent brought to a halt. We will employ a strategy of covert operations to undermine their progress and sow discord between them. The plan was met with nods of approval from the assembly. The Xenthrax were masters of subterfuge and sabotage, their agents skilled in the art of destabilization. A campaign of discreet yet effective operations could cripple Valtran advancements and erode the trust between them and the Ashari without drawing the direct ire of either party. As the meeting adjourned, agents of the Xenthrax coalition were dispatched with orders to infiltrate Valterra. 
Their mission was clear to sabotage key infrastructure, steal sensitive technologies, and, if possible, incite doubt among the Valtran populace about the true intentions of their Ashari benefactors. Back on Valterra, the air was alive with the spirit of progress and cooperation. Unbeknownst to its inhabitants, the seeds of discord were being sown, carried on the winds of change that had once promised a new dawn. Joran Varric, ever immersed in his work of bridging the worlds of Valterra and the Ashari, remained oblivious to the shadows that crept ever closer, threatening to engulf the world he loved in uncertainty and turmoil. As the first reports of unexplained malfunctions and security breaches began to surface, a sense of unease took root. What had initially been dismissed as teething problems in the integration of new technologies soon took on a more sinister aspect. The incidents were too coordinated, too targeted to be mere coincidences. Joran, with his innate curiosity and dedication to his people's advancement, found himself drawn into the investigation. His journey, which had begun under the stars with a vision of unity and exploration, was about to take a darker turn. Unraveling the mystery behind these disturbances would require all his wit and resolve, for the shadows that stirred were not just a threat to Veltara's progress, but to the very fabric of the Alliance that had brought hope to his world. As Valterra grappled with the unsettling wave of disruptions, Joran Varric found himself at the intersection of two worlds, each brimming with its own mysteries and challenges. The spirit of cooperation that had once flowed freely between the Valterans and the Ashari now carried undercurrents of tension, the origins of which were as elusive as they were troubling. In an effort to reaffirm the bonds that united them, the Ashari extended an invitation that would transcend the mere exchange of knowledge and technology. Joran, alongside a select group of Valtran delegates, was invited to embark on a journey aboard the Ashari flagship, the Azure Harmony, to explore the Ashari Confederation and witness firsthand the wonders of a civilization that spanned the stars. The Azure Harmony was a marvel of engineering and artistry, its sleek design and advanced technology a testament to the Ashari's long-standing harmony with the cosmos. As the vessel glided through the vastness of space, Joran's sense of wonder was rekindled, each star and nebula a beacon of possibility in the endless night. The journey was a tapestry of experiences that broadened Joran's perspective on the universe and his place within it. From the verdant gardens of Ashari's agricultural hubs to the bustling marketplaces where countless species exchanged goods and stories, Joran was immersed in a culture that valued diversity, knowledge, and peace. Amidst these explorations, Joran engaged in deep conversations with his Ashari counterparts, discussions that ventured beyond the scientific into the philosophical realms of existence and cohabitation in the universe. It was during one such dialogue in the tranquil setting of an Ashari Arboretum that Joran encountered Lyris, an Ashari scholar with a keen interest in the emerging dynamics of interstellar societies. Lyris and Joran's discussions delved into the intricacies of alliance building and the challenges faced by civilizations stepping into the galactic community. It was through these conversations that Joran began to grasp the delicate balance of trust and mutual respect that underpins such relationships. However, the tranquility of their journey was abruptly shattered when an emergency alert summoned all hands to their stations. A covert Xenthrax operative who had managed to infiltrate the Azure Harmony under the guise of a diplomatic attaché initiated a sabotage attempt aimed at crippling the ship's core systems. The alarm that echoed through the corridors of the Azure Harmony was a stark reminder of the threats that lurked in the shadows, threats that sought to unravel the fabric of trust and cooperation that the Valterans and Ashari had woven together. Joran, propelled by a sense of duty to protect the vessel that had become a symbol of hope, joined forces with the Ashari security team in a tense race against time. Together, they navigated the labyrinthine passageways of the ship, each turn a potential ambush, each shadow a hiding place for the saboteur. The confrontation, when it came, was a flurry of action and resolve. The saboteur, cornered in the engineering bay, was no match for the combined might of Joran and the Ashari. With the saboteur neutralized and the ship's systems restored, the Azure Harmony resumed its journey, its passengers united by the ordeal they had overcome. 
In the aftermath of the sabotage attempt, Joran and Lyris stood side by side, gazing out at the tapestry of stars that stretched before them. The incident had revealed the fragile nature of the peace they sought to build, but it had also underscored the strength that lay in unity and shared purpose. As the Azure Harmony continued its voyage through the cosmos, Joran Varric's resolve was stronger than ever. The challenges they faced were but stepping stones on the path to a future where Valterra and the Ashari, along with all peace-loving species of the galaxy, could stand together as beacons of hope and harmony in the vast, uncharted wilderness of space. Under the cover of darkness, the silent shadows of Xanthrax operatives crept through the infrastructure of Valterra, their presence a malignant whisper against the backdrop of the planet's newfound vibrancy. The once peaceful nights, illuminated by the collaborative spirit of Valteran and Ashari endeavors, now bore the invisible scars of sabotage and espionage. Joran Varric, his mind still echoing with the wonders and wisdom of the Ashari, found himself thrust into a game of shadows he had never wished to play. The disruptions that had initially seemed like mere technological teething issues were now revealed to be the strategic machinations of the Xenthrax Coalition, determined to sever the growing bond between Valterra and the Ashari. The Xenthrax's tactics were insidious, targeting the very heart of Valteran progress. Power grids flickered and died, leaving swathes of the population in darkness. Communication networks were intermittently severed, sowing confusion and fear among the populace. Even the Ashari provided technologies, marvels that had promised a new dawn for Valterra were not immune to the clandestine onslaught. As the pattern of sabotage became undeniable, Joran, with his unique understanding of both Valteran and Ashari systems, was called upon to spearhead the efforts to counter this shadow war. His days were consumed by investigations into the breaches, each discovery a piece in the puzzle of the Xenthrax's grand strategy to isolate and weaken Valterra. The turning point came with the uncovering of a Xenthrax device, a sophisticated piece of technology designed to disrupt the energy flow to the defense systems protecting Valtara's airspace. The device, cleverly hidden within the main power grid, was a ticking time bomb set to unleash chaos at the heart of Valteran defense. With the assistance of Ashari experts, Joran led a daring operation to neutralize the threat. The mission, fraught with danger, tested the limits of their courage and ingenuity. As they worked against the clock, the unity and trust between the Valteran and Ashari teams shone as a beacon of defiance against the Xenthrax's divisive tactics. The successful dismantling of the device was a victory, not just in the tangible sense of averting a catastrophe, but in reaffirming the strength of the alliance between Valterra and the Ashari. It was a testament to the resilience of their bond, a bond forged not just in the light of shared knowledge and technology, but in the shadows of shared adversity. Yet, even as they celebrated this triumph, Joran and his allies knew that the battle was far from over. The Xenthrax's gambit had been thwarted, but their intent and capacity for destruction remained a looming threat. The siege might have been lifted momentarily, but the war for the soul of Valterra, fought in the silent corridors of sabotage and espionage, raged on. In the heart of the struggle, Joran stood as a beacon of hope and resilience. His journey from a humble observer of the stars to a key defender of his world was a testament to the indomitable spirit of Valterra. The path ahead was fraught with uncertainty, but the unity between Valterra and the Ashari, strengthened in the crucible of conflict, promised a glimmer of hope in the face of the gathering storm. The return of Joran Varric and the Valteran delegates from their enlightening journey aboard the Ashari flagship was meant to be a beacon of hope, a testament to the unbreakable bond between Valterra and the Ashari. However, the reality that greeted them upon their return was far from the vision of unity and progress they had envisaged. The Xenthrax coalition, undeterred by the thwarted sabotage attempt on the Azure Harmony, had escalated their campaign against Valterra. Their strategy had shifted from covert operations to overt aggression, marking a dark turn in their efforts to undermine the Ashari Valteran alliance. The skies of Valterra, once serene and dotted with the gentle lights of incoming trade ships, were now marred by the ominous silhouettes of Xenthrax warships. 
The blockade was swift and decisive, cutting off Valterra from the rest of the galaxy and casting a shadow of dread over the planet. Joran, with his first-hand experience of the broader galactic community and its complexities, found himself thrust into a role he had never anticipated. As the Zenthrax fleet began its bombardment of strategic sites across Valterra, Joran coordinated with the planet's defense forces, leveraging the advanced technologies and strategies he had learned from the Ashari to mount a resistance. The Siege of Valterra was a harrowing ordeal with the Zenthrax unleashing their full might upon the planet. The Valteran defense systems, bolstered by Ashari technology, held firm against the initial assaults, but it was clear that they were outmatched against the relentless Zenthrax onslaught. As the days turned into weeks, the skies of Valterra were lit not by stars, but by the relentless exchange of firepower between the besieged planet and the encroaching Zenthrax fleet. The once verdant fields and bustling cities bore the scars of the conflict, a stark reminder of the cost of standing against the Zenthrax coalition. Amidst the chaos, Joran's thoughts often drifted to the peaceful moments aboard the Azure Harmony, the discussions with Lyris, and the vision of a galaxy united in diversity and cooperation. The harsh reality of the siege seemed a cruel contradiction to those ideals, a grim testament to the lengths some would go to assert their dominance over others. The turning point came when the Zenthrax deployed a new weapon, a devastating energy cannon that pierced through Valtara's defenses with terrifying efficiency. The destruction wrought by this weapon was unlike anything the Valtarans had faced, and it became evident that without intervention, Valtara would fall. In the darkest hour, with the Zenthrax preparing for their final assault, Joran made a desperate decision. Utilizing the last remaining communication channel that had been shielded from the Xenthrax's jamming technologies, he sent a plea for help to the Ashari. The message was a beacon of hope cast into the vastness of space, carrying with it the weight of Valtara's plight and the trust that the Ashari would come to their aid. As the Xenthrax forces readied themselves for the final blow, the people of Valtara looked to the skies, not in despair, but in hopeful anticipation of the friends they had come to know and trust. The Siege of Valterra was not just a battle for territory or resources, it was a test of the bonds forged between two disparate worlds, a testament to the belief that in the face of overwhelming darkness, the light of unity and friendship could still prevail. The situation on Valterra had reached a critical point, with the relentless Zenthrax siege pushing the planet to the brink of collapse. The once vibrant world, teeming with life and hope due to its newfound alliance with the Ashari, now found itself isolated, its skies darkened by the imposing Xenthrax fleet. The energy cannon's devastating blows had shattered much of Valtara's defenses, leaving its inhabitants in a state of despair. In the heart of Valtara's capital, beneath the battered but still standing dome of the Planetary Defense Command Center, Joran Varric alongside the planet's leaders, faced the grim reality of their situation. The air was heavy with a mix of determination and the palpable fear of an uncertain future. It was here, in this dimly lit chamber echoing with the distant rumble of bombardments, that Joran prepared to send a desperate plea for help into the vastness of space. The communication device before him, a sophisticated piece of technology gifted by the Ashari, represented the last thread of hope connecting Valterra to its allies. Joran's fingers hovered over the console, the weight of his responsibility pressing down on him like the gravity of a neutron star. With a deep breath, he initiated the sequence, his voice steady but imbued with the urgency of their plight. To our Ashari friends, this is Joran Varric of Valterra, sending a distress signal from the heart of our besieged world. The Xenthrax Coalition has laid siege to our planet, employing weaponry of devastating power. Our defenses crumble under their assault, and our people face the direst of fates. In this dark hour, we call upon the bonds of friendship and alliance that we have forged with you. We plead for your aid against this overwhelming force. Valterra stands on the precipice, and without your intervention, we fear our world will be lost. The message, encoded with the urgency of their situation and the hope that the Ashari would respond, was cast into the cosmos like a bottle thrown into the cosmic ocean, its destination uncertain, but its plea clear. The waiting that followed was agonizing. 
Each passing moment stretched into eternity as the people of Valterra, from the soldiers manning the last operational defense turrets to the civilians huddled in shelters, awaited a sign, any indication that their call had been heard. Days passed, each one darker than the last, as the Xenthrax tightened their grip on the beleaguered planet. Joran, despite the growing despair, refused to let the flame of hope be extinguished. He spent his days coordinating what remained of their defenses and his nights staring into the star-filled sky, searching for a sign of salvation. Then, when the situation seemed most dire and the people of Valterra had begun to brace for the end, the skies above them changed. The oppressive blockade that had smothered their world was suddenly pierced by flashes of brilliant light, heralding the arrival of the Ashari fleet. The sleek and graceful ships, glowing with the serene light of their energy shields, formed a protective arc above Valterra, a stark contrast to the dark and menacing forms of the Xenthrax vessels. The arrival of the Ashari was a sight that reignited the hearts of the Valtran people with hope and relief. Their message, a plea cast among the stars, had been answered, and in this moment of deliverance, the bonds of friendship and alliance between Valterra and the Ashari were stronger than ever. As the Ashari fleet engaged the Xenthrax, the skies above Valterra became a canvas for the fierce ballet of interstellar combat, a testament to the lengths to which the Ashari would go to defend their friends. Joran, witnessing the unfolding battle, felt a profound sense of gratitude and resolve. The Siege of Valterra, a dark chapter in the planet's history, was now a turning point, marking the moment when the Ashari stood by their side, not just as allies, but as true friends willing to face the darkness together. The sudden appearance of the Ashari fleet in the skies of Valterra was a turning point in the siege that had brought the planet to its knees. The sleek and majestic ships, symbols of hope and technological marvel, positioned themselves between Valterra and the Xenthrax armada with a grace that belied their readiness for combat. The Ashari's arrival was not just a military reinforcement, it was a profound statement of solidarity, a promise made manifest that they would stand with Valterra in its darkest hour. As the first volleys of energy fire exchanged between the Ashari and Xenthrax ships illuminated the heavens, Joran Varric stood at the heart of the Planetary Defense Command, coordinating with the Ashari commanders. The communication link, once used to send a desperate plea into the void, now buzzed with strategic commands and words of encouragement. The Ashari fleet, led by the flagship Eternal Dawn, employed tactics that were both elegant and effective, weaving through the Xenthrax barrage with an agility that spoke of centuries of navigational expertise. Their shields shimmered under the onslaught, absorbing and deflecting the energy blasts with a resilience that heartened the Valtran defenders. On the surface, the people of Valterra, from the battle-weary soldiers to the anxious civilians who had endured the siege, watched the skies with a mix of awe and renewed hope. The sight of the Ashari ships, dancing amidst the stars to protect their world, was a beacon of light in the darkness that had enveloped their lives. Amidst the chaos of battle, a critical moment came when the Eternal Dawn positioned itself directly in the path of the Xenthrax's Dreadnought the source of the devastating energy cannon that had wreaked havoc on Valtara's defenses. The Ashari flagship, with its advanced shielding technology, was the only vessel capable of withstanding a direct hit from the cannon, a fact that the Ashari captain, Commander Solara, knew all too well. In a display of unparalleled bravery and sacrifice, the Eternal Dawn held its ground, its shields glowing brighter with each approaching blast. Commander Solara's voice, calm and resolute, came through the calm link directed at both her crew and the Valtran command center. To all who stand with Valterra this day, know that the bonds we share are forged in the heart of stars, unbreakable and eternal. Today, we honor our vow to stand as guardians and friends, for in the face of tyranny, we choose unity, we choose courage. The moment the energy cannon fired, a brilliant lance of light that seemed to split the very fabric of space, all eyes were on the eternal dawn. The flagship, a beacon of defiance against the dark tide, met the blast with its shields at full strength. The impact was a spectacle of light and energy that momentarily blinded all who watched, a collision of forces that would determine the fate of Valterra. 
When the glare subsided, the eternal dawn remained, its shields flickering but holding, a testament to Ashari engineering and the indomitable spirit of those who had pledged to defend Valterra. The Zenthrax Dreadnought, its primary weapon neutralized by the flagship's sacrifice, found itself besieged by the combined forces of the Ashari and Valteran defenders. The tide of battle had turned, and with it, the fate of Valterra. The Zenthrax, their siege broken and their dreadnought vulnerable, retreated under the relentless assault of the Ashari fleet. The skies of Valterra, once darkened by the shadow of invasion, were now alight with the fires of liberation. In the aftermath of the battle, as the Ashari ships pursued the fleeing Zenthrax, Joran and the people of Valterra could finally breathe a sigh of relief. The siege was over, and their world was saved, not by weapons or warfare, but by the unyielding bond of friendship and the promise of allies who stood true to their word. The Ashari's vow, made in the heart of stars and sealed in the heat of battle, was more than a pledge of military support. It was a commitment to stand by their friends, to protect and uplift them even in the face of the greatest threats. And as the dust settled on the battlefield of Valterra, the vow resonated in the hearts of all who had witnessed the valor and unity of those who fought for a world not their own, but cherished all the same. In the aftermath of the Zenthrax retreat, the skies above Valterra slowly returned to their peaceful state, with the stars shining brightly as if to acknowledge the planet's hard-won freedom. The Ashari fleet, having ensured the security of Valterra, began to depart, their ships fading into the vastness of space like guardians receding into legend. Yet, the Eternal Dawn, the flagship that had stood as a bulwark against the onslaught, remained in orbit, a silent testament to the battle that had transpired. The world of Valterra, while scarred by the siege, buzzed with a renewed vigor. Communities came together to rebuild what had been lost, and amidst the reconstruction, there was an unspoken understanding that their planet had been irrevocably changed, not just by the conflict, but by the profound bonds of friendship forged in its crucible. Joran Varric, who had become a symbol of Valtara's resilience and its bridge to the stars, stood at the forefront of the rebuilding efforts. His experiences aboard the Azure Harmony and the subsequent siege had imbued him with a deep sense of purpose, driving him to ensure that the legacy of their Ashari allies and the unity they had demonstrated would endure. It was during this time of recovery that a proposal was put forth, a memorial to honor the sacrifice and bravery of the Ashari, particularly the Eternal Dawn and its crew, who had stood unwaveringly with Valterra in its darkest hour. The idea was met with unanimous support, a reflection of the deep gratitude felt by every Valteran. The memorial, envisioned as a beacon of hope and solidarity, was to be erected in the capital's central square, a place where it would stand as a constant reminder of the bonds forged between Valterra and the Ashari. Joran took a personal interest in the memorial's creation, working closely with artists and historians to ensure that it captured the essence of what had transpired. The result was a stunning sculpture, titled Legacy of the Azure Wing, crafted from the very metals that had once comprised part of the Eternal Dawn's hull, which the Ashari had offered as a gift. The sculpture depicted an elegant wing, a symbol of the Ashari ships, enveloping a globe representing Valterra, signifying the protective embrace of their allies. Beneath the sculpture, a plaque bore an inscription in both Valteran and Ashari languages. In the fires of conflict, bonds were forged that transcended worlds. This memorial stands in honor of the Ashari, our friends among the stars who stood with us in our time of need. May the legacy of the eternal dawn remind us of the strength found in unity and the enduring power of friendship. The unveiling of the memorial was a solemn yet celebratory affair, attended by representatives from across Valterra and a delegation from the Ashari, including Commander Solara of the Eternal Dawn. The ceremony was a confluence of cultures, a poignant reminder of the shared victory and the mutual respect that had blossomed from adversity. Joran, addressing the gathered crowd, spoke of the courage and sacrifice that had preserved their world. His words, imbued with emotion, resonated with those who had lived through the siege and understood the depth of the gratitude owed to their Ashari friends. As the ceremony concluded, the crowd dispersed, leaving the memorial to stand vigil under the watchful gaze of the stars. It was more than a monument to a battle won. 
It was a symbol of the enduring promise that in the vast tapestry of the cosmos, no world stands alone when bound by the unshakable ties of friendship and alliance. For Joran and the people of Valterra, the legacy of the Azure Wing was not only a testament to the past but a beacon for the future, guiding them towards a destiny intertwined with the myriad civilizations of the stars, united in their pursuit of peace and understanding in the boundless expanse of the universe.